Hello everyone once again. It's been a while as always. So this is a package and we're going to open it because I have something quite exciting inside here. Uh, something a bit unusual to be shipped through the, the mail but let's do it. Alright, it's plants. I'll give a bit of um, publicity to these people. Um, not that they paid me or sponsored this in any way, but you know. It's very tempting to go all how to basic on this and just like start stabbing the box or something. But... Looks like a plant in there. For three days in the mail, I think that's pretty healthy. I'm quite impressed. Well, like, well, I had two overnight stays in the mail. So, like two and a half days. But still, I think they look pretty healthy. A lot healthier than I thought they were going to look. Oh, drink up, little guys. You deserved it. So I gave the task of naming the plants to my girlfriend, Georgia, and she decided that seeing as they're Mexican, they needed a slightly Mexican name, and seeing as we just finished watching Breaking Bad, she gave them the names Steve and Gomez. So, um, naturally, I think Gomez is the favorite over Steve, but, you know, hopefully they both succeed. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's their names. All right, but the important question is, why have I bought herb plants and why is it on this channel? What's it got to do with anything? Well, these are ebazote plants and ebazote happens to make a large amount of a compound in its oil called ascaridol. As a scaridol? No, oh, we'll, we'll go with ascaridol. And ascaridol happens to be, if we look at the structure, an organic peroxide. So this plant, just for some freak of nature basically, um, there's probably some reason this plant makes this compound, but no one really knows why. It's probably biological defense or something like that. But this plant makes an organic peroxide. And of course, as we know, organic peroxides are explosive. Uh, this is a very, very rare occurrence in nature that an organic peroxide is made because of their um, instability. This plant makes this compound in quite high percentages. And in fact, some reports give, um, so the, the oil of this plant, has a, an ascaridol um, component of 50 to 70%, which is an insane amount of organic peroxide produced by this plant. The plan is to grow these plants up big and strong. Um, they're only an annual plant, so they're probably gonna die at some point. Close to the end of their lifetime, they'll start producing some seeds, and that is apparently the time at which the ascaridol is most pre prevalent in the leaves. Um, so we're going to do an extraction of that, and then we're going to try and blow some up. The other day I actually came across a Gumtree ad which was for an antique store, and they said, we've got a whole lot of um, chemistry glassware in, and um, you can come buy it. And they didn't really know what any of it was. Um, they were just selling it because it looked fancy, which is, you know, what antique stores do. But I happened to stop by, and they had a whole lot of stuff. This isn't all of it, um, but it's all genuine Pyrex um, quick fit glassware. So um, it looks pretty old, but it's actually the, the genuine sort of stuff made in Quickfit England. So I got, um, not this piece, <laughs> but these two, I got that my huge desiccator, um, which has appeared in a video or two so far, I think. A couple of gas wash bottles and like gas adapters and a hundred mil, uh, a thousand mil flask. That's all genuine Pyrex stuff. And importantly, the, the bit I was trying to track down, they, were, they had a succilic extractor in there. Um, so these are really nice fancy bits of glassware for um, extractions and I've never had one before and I never really wanted to buy one online because they sort of used that sort of drug material and they're sort of pretty targeted by the police. Um, but of course buying it at a local store is, is really fine. One thing that's very interesting is actually all of these say made in quick fit England and that's um, where the sort of genuine Pyrex thing comes from, England. 
Um, and they all say that, except for the Soxilic Extractor. It says, made in quick fit Australia. And I can't find any information about, about that. I didn't know Australia produced any glass, so this could be very old, but I've never seen made in quick fit Australia before on any piece of glassware. So, because it is quite an intricate bit of glassware, it'd be interesting to know that Australia actually made some of that. This adapter at the top here is, is 3435, just so you can get more stuff into, into this cavity. Um, so I had to buy an adapter. You know, a proper stock silica extractor um, sort of kit has this, but then another, a, a, like a short condenser that goes, is just the 3435 um, up to 2429. The owner of the antique store said that someone had already bought that because they liked how the glass was like, you know, sort of bubbly in there because it's sort of like an, an all-in condenser in there. I've got this adapter so I can just put that on there and then put a normal condenser onto that. So. Um, you know, it'll be a very tall setup because I'll use like a 30 centimeter condenser, but I don't really care. So anyway, this is a bit of a long-term project because I have to grow these up. Um, and so it'll probably be about a year before they start um, getting near the end of their lifetime. At that point, they'll be quite big. I think they'll be nearly a meter high if I grow them correctly. Um, so there won't be any shortage of leaves. But the question is, what's the best way to extract the ascaridol from, uh, ascaridol from the leaves? I can do possibly steam distillation or I have the soxilic extractor. And then from there, once we have basically the oil of this plant, what's a good way for me then to try and purify that down and get the pure sort of ascaridol out of the mix of, um, you know, oils that this plant will make. In a lab, obviously the, the, the way of doing it is that you just do chromatography, column chromatography, and you just run it through some silico, different solvents, NMR, all the different, you know, fractions, and then you get your scale doll out. I don't obviously have like an NMR stuff, but I don't, I can't run a column here. So, um, and I can't like, I don't have TLC, so I can't like monitor the columns. Even if I had the silica, it would have to be basically like a blind <laughs> column and I have to just take all the fractions out and maybe just NMR all of them regardless. It would be a bit of a hassle. I'm waiting upon your suggestions on A, what's the best way to do the extraction, assuming that I have quite a large amount of leaves, and B, what's the best way to then purify down the ascaridol? Because the problem is the ascaridol isn't that explosive. It's just one peroxide group in an otherwise sort of stable molecule. So, you know, the oxygen balance is, is terrible. So it's not gonna be that explosive. So if it's, if it's diluted in a whole other mix of stuff like limonene or other sort of just terpenes, um, that essential oil isn't going to be that explosive. So I have a feeling we need to sort of purify this garadol out in order to see any sort of explosive effects. Other than that, I just guess I have to learn how to grow some plants. <laughs> um, I was meant to get some potting soil and plant these already, but haven't got around to it. But they're looking, looking healthy enough for the moment. And hopefully we can devise some good methods of um, extraction and purification. Um, and maybe use a soxilic extractor. I really just want to use it because it's nice and new and fancy, but um, if we don't use it for this project, I will try and think of something else to, something legal to do with it. Thanks very much, and I'm looking forward to talking with you guys in the comments about what we should do about this project. All right, thank you.